Well, here we are again, Rainbow Praise. That's it's going right. to be a great time today. We, you know, I'm talking about it's your move, moving from victory to defeat, from yes. defeat to victory. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, defeat is not where we as children of God are supposed to live. No. We are supposed to walk in victory. And some people, all they have is a defeatist attitude. I, you know, I don't want to be around somebody that's always talking defeat. Uh, I don't either. I mean, but hey, we have a choice to make. That's right. You can make a choice to be defeated or you can make a choice and take a step toward God and make a decision to move and do what God told you to do and and, and get his victory that he said yes. belonged to us. He said, I want you to have life and have it more abundantly. Well, having abundant life is not a defeatist attitude. No. That's a victorious attitude. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, I always triumph in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. That's right. So, hey, why don't we go right now where... I am talking about it's your move, moving from defeat, defeat to, to victory. victory. All right. I want to look into the Old Testament and an incident that I think will help show us what it means to move and appropriate the blessings and benefits that he already has for us. Now, I'm not going to read this whole story, but I'm going to read parts of it in 1 Samuel 14, 1 Samuel 14, 1 Samuel 14. Okay, the people on the front row have found it, so we'll read. One day Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come, let us go over to where the Philistines have their outposts. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Meanwhile, Saul and his 600 men were kept on the outskirts of Geba around the pomegranate tree at Migron. Now let's skip down to verse 6. Let us go across to the outpost of those pagans, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Do what you think is best, the armor bearer replied. I'm with you completely, whatever you decide. Now, I'm reading from the NLT. All right then, Jonathan told him, we'll cross over and let them see us. If they say to us, stay where you're at, we'll kill you, then we'll stop and not go to them. But if they say, come up and fight, then we will go up. That will be the Lord's sign that he will help us defeat them. When the Philistines saw them coming, they shouted, look, the Hebrews are crawling out of their holes. Then the men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan, come up here and we'll teach you a lesson. Come on, climb right behind me, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for the Lord will help us defeat them. So they climbed up using both hands and feet and the Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer, killed the uh, armor bearer, killed those who came behind them. They killed some 20 men in all and their bodies were scattered all about a half of an acre. Suddenly panic broke out in the Philistine army, both in the camp and in the field, including even the outposts and the raiding parties. And just then an earthquake shook, a struck, and everyone was terrified. Saul's lookouts in, Ge in Geba of Benjamin saw a strange sight. The vast army of the Philistines began to melt away in every direction. Call the roll and find out who's missing, Saul ordered. And when they checked, they found Jonathan and his armor bearer were gone. Skip down to verse 20. Then Saul and all his men rushed out to, to the battle and found the Philistines killing each other. There was terrible confusion everywhere. Even the Hebrews who had previously gone over to the Philistine ar army revolted and joined up in with Saul and Jonathan and the rest of the Israelites. Likewise, the men of Israel who were hiding in the hills of Ephraim joined the chase when they saw the Philistines running away. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle continued to rage beyond Beth Haven. Now, this is a, an incident that talks about getting a victory. You know, actually, 
they got a victory from what looked like sure defeat. Now, have you ever, how many of you have ever experienced times when it looked like sure defeat? Well, we got several in the congregation. I have to do, raise my hand. Uh, the, let me tell the rest of you, if you haven't experienced it, you will. I think more people than raise their hand have experienced what I talked about. God has made a way for us to move out of defeat and appropriate victory. But you know what? You've got to do something about it. It's your move. In this chapter, we find that Jonathan, we find Jonathan's father that was the king, King Saul, he was sitting under the pomegranate tree in Migron with a defeatist attitude. Saul had 600 men, didn't have any weapons because the Philistines sitting out there with about 30,000 chariots and 6,000 cavalry plus all the infantrymen or the foot soldiers. The Philistines had sent raiding parties and destroyed all the blacksmith shops and killed the blacksmiths and leaving Israel weaponless. And only Saul and his son Jonathan had weapons. Now, there's only about 600 left out of an original force of about 3,000. Some, some of them had run off and, and hid, and you heard that when he was reading. Others had said, well, man, we're getting the tar beat out of us. Let's go over here and join. Let's just, just join up with the Philistines. So they, they went and joined with the Philistines. And now here, the children of Israel are God's people. Now that's us, okay? I'm going to sort of type this a little bit. Israel was God's people. Well, we're God's people, okay? Now, the Israelites were, are, were I mean, the Philistines were a type of Satan who was always causing problems for, for Israel. So, Satan is like the Philistines was in Israel. If you read in the Old Testament, the Philistines was always a thorn in the side of, the, of Israel, always coming against them. How many ever read that over in the Old Testament? Yeah, some of you have. You need to go read it if you don't. Read the history of Israel. Why do you need to go into the Old Testament and read the history of Israel? Paul tells you in Corinthians, he says that what happened to Israel happens as examples to us. Both the victories and the defeats. The defeats were because they left God out. So it's an example to us not to leave God out. That's another subject, so I'll go on. Okay. Now, here, these Philistines had backed the Jews down, the Israelites, and now here they are all sitting there in defeat. And that's exactly what the Satan does to us sometimes. He's taking us out of the place of God's blessing. Now only two people, Jonathan and his armor bearer, had escaped this defeatist attitude or at least they got to the point that they said, what is the use of sitting around here doing nothing? We're going to be killed anyway. So they decided to do something about it. They moved. You know, that's what the enemy's doing to people today. He's getting them down. He gets them down emotionally and then he starts working on them spiritually and if, and, and, and if he can, and what happens is people get to defeat his attitude just like the Israelites did. And then they just sat down, well, it's hopeless anyway. Not anything to do about this situation. So they just have thrown up their hands and done nothing. 
and let the enemy run all over them. That's what the Israelites were doing. They were sending, if you read the whole story, they were sending these raiding parties in and they were coming in and they were taking advantage of them. Now, if you're going to rise above your situation uh, and get victory from defeat, it's your move. It's not God's move. See, God's already done it. Jonathan got up and did something. He said, why are we here like this when we have Jehovah God on our side? Why are we sitting here allowing ourselves to be taken advantage of when we have Jehovah God? And that's what you need to realize. Why are you sitting there letting the enemy take advantage of you, keeping you in defeat when you've got God's word that tells you that you can make it, you can come from victory to defeat? Why sit there with a defeatist attitude? Let me know what I'm talking about. You know, there are some teams in the sport that they go on the field to play the game saying, well, we can't beat this team. And they can't because they were defeated before. They wasn't even no use to play the game. Come on. No use to play the game. You've got to believe you can before you can. And then you got to move. You know, God can take care of your situation if you're willing to move to take advantage of it. Well, brother, I'm praying for God to do something. Wrong. That's not the prayer. I didn't say you didn't need to pray, but that's not the prayer you need to pray. Because God has already told you through Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection, he has already taken care of the situation. Now it's time for you to get up and do something about what he has already done. He has already defeated the devil. Now you get up and you go out and do something. See, take a stand in the name of Jesus. Appropriate your victory with confidence. You know, there's a lot of people that talk the word, but you can tell when they're talking, they're not confident. A person that's confident, when they make a faith confession, they got some punch and power behind it. They got a confidence. How many of you have dogs? I got two great Pyrenees outside and I got Annette's standard poodle inside Fergie. Now, those big old dogs outside, Lucky, he's a great Pyrenees mountain dog. If y'all don't know what they are, they come out of the Pyrenees mountains and they're a herd, sheep herding dogs and they, they've got a fur underneath they got two coats and then they got hair over the fur that sheds the water and so forth and so on he weighs about 100 pounds he's got feet about that big around he'll stand up and put his feet right here and look me in the eye some of you have seen Lucky he's a big old boy now Lynette can go out there and she can tell Lucky to do something and he don't pay any attention because she don't have the confidence in, the, in her voice. I can go out there, look it. And he stops in his tracks. Why? Because it is the confidence I have in my voice. You know, how many of you tell your dog to sit? Just say, sit. And half the time they don't sit when you just say sit. But if you say sit, get some confidence. How many of them, they, they, they obey? Why? Because they recognize the authority when it has confidence behind it. 
They do not recognize the authority when there's no confidence behind it. And that's the same thing the devil does. He doesn't recognize the word coming out of your mouth when it doesn't come out with the confidence knowing that God is going to meet your need. Don't care what you see, what you feel, or anything like that. You have to have a confidence that you're going to do it. You can't just say, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Bible says no weapon formed against me will prosper. The devil ain't going to pay no attention to that. You've got to put your foot down and say, the Bible says no weapon formed against me will prosper. I mean, you've got, you got to talk like you believe it. How many understand what I'm talking about? See, according to James 4, 7, when you, when you use authority with confidence, the devil will flee from you. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Flee. Run from is in terror. Flee from the prayer group, the pastor, a group of people praying. No, you, you. My dad used to say to me, he said, son, or Ken, he'd say, listen, you learn how to pray. You learn how to take authority because nobody cares about you like you do. And I know, I know Rich has heard him say that same thing. Craig's heard him say it. Some of you people heard him say that same thing. He said, hey, you learn to do it because nobody cares about you like you do. People all say, pray for me. Well, hey, how many thousand people tell me to pray for them? Come on now. If I think about it, if the Lord brings them to me, I will. But you know what? You think about you every day, so you can pray every day. <laughs> How many of you think about yourself every day? Right? Y'all don't think about pastor every day. I thank God. There's some of you thinking about me every day, so that means the, the congregation, somebody in the congregation praying for me every day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the devil knows that you have authority ahead of time. But he only pays attention to you when you speak that authority with confidence. Confidence means you really believe that it's going to happen when you speak the word, what the Bible says, not what the preacher said, not what brother so-and-so said on the television, not what this one said or that one said, what the Bible says. See, always go back to what the Bible said. Of course, y'all have heard me say it more, more than once. Dad, always, anytime you ask him anything about anything, a question, Brother Hagin, what about this? What does the Bible say, son? I go to him, Dad, what about that? What does the Bible say? That's where we need to get to when the enemy brings something to us. What does the Bible say? Not what somebody else said. What did, what did God say? That's the Bible. That's God talking right here. Some people say God never talked to you. Well, if you read your Bible, God talked to you. Because this is God talking. Hold up your Bible. Hold up your iPad, your iPhone, whatever you got. Just got to say, say this. This is God, this is God. talking to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody getting anything out of this? You know, you cannot face the enemy without confidence. You, if you face the enemy without confidence, you'll be tentative and you won't execute like you should. You know, you got to go out there and line up. I mean, when you're playing ball, you got to go out there and line up and you got to execute your, your assignment with confidence. Amen. 
I graduated from high school weighing 145 pounds. I'm out here, and I got to take out this this cornerback over here, and I know he weighs 185 pounds. He's got me outweighed over 40 pounds. But one of my buddies said, "Hey, hey, what are you gonna do with that guy?" I said, "He's he's a he's all district." I said, "I'm gonna knock the fire out of him. That's what I'm gonna do." <laughs> if you don't have that kind of confidence, you will not execute your block perfectly, because you will go into it. Oh, I hope I can do this. I think I can. No, you've got to go in there knowing you can. That's the same thing you've got to do with the Word of God. If you don't go in there with confidence, you will not execute the Word of God with boldness and with confidence to take the enemy out. Anybody understand what I'm saying to you? You've got to get that gritty, I don't know the word to use. I mean, that's sort of my, you know, I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. That's that, uh. You got to do the same thing with the word of God when you're hitting the enemy. You got to go, uh. I don't know the word to use. I know what I'm talking about. I know what it comes from. The It has to come from the inside. Nobody can stop me. The devil can't stop me. None of his junk that he brings can stop me because God has already taken care of it and I'm going to get up and move just like Jonathan did. You know, Jonathan's confidence was not in his fighting ability, although I'm sure he was a pretty good fighter, pretty good warrior. His confidence was in God. When you face the devil... You have to have your confidence in God, but you've got to go out and do something. His confidence in God, but he still went up there with his sword in his hand to take care of the enemy. His confidence was not in his ability, but it was in God's ability to use him to overcome. God used two people to snatch victory from defeat. Two guys. See, their confidence was in God. We need today to look at our situation and realize it's not impossible, although it says it is. Remember, it's your move. You can move from defeat to victory with God if you get up and move. That's, it's your move. That's right. And you need to always talk to yourself and say, you know, whatever it is, I can do it. Right. I can make it. I have the victory. Right. I am successful. You need to, to talk to yourself all the time. That's right. Hey, and these messages that I'm speaking are taken from my book, It's Your Move. And uh, I've got it along with How to Train the Human Spirit, my dad's CD, on how to train the human spirit. Yes. They're ten dollars. That's regular thirteen ninety five. Thirteen ninety five. You That's might as well say fourteen dollars because what can you do with a nickel anymore? That's right. Now, you used to could do a lot, but, <laughs> but you, can't you can't anymore. anymore. No, no. no, you can't. No, when I was in the second grade, I could go over across the street to Mule's store uh -huh. and get two big stalks of uh, of sugar cane to chew up. To chew up? Oh, nickel. my goodness. I know. You <laughs> that was a while back, though. That's <laughs> right. A long while back. Well, guess what starts this weekend, honey? Camp meeting. Camp meeting. All week long, July. Sunday, yes. 6 p.m. Well, of course, we'll have regular service at 10 o'clock here at the church, yes. but at 6 p.m. Sunday night, mm -hmm. we start camp, camp meeting. meeting. That's right, and it goes through Friday night. Yeah. Uh, that is July the 29th. And so come, we're going to have an awesome, awesome time. Indoor camp meeting, we'll have air conditioning. Right. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I'm believing that the Spirit of the Lord is going to move in a special, special way. way. Right. Monday through Friday, it's 10 a.m. to 30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. 
uh, with different speakers. It's going to be great. You don't want to miss it. As my dad used to say, if you miss it, you're going to miss half, half your, life. your life. That was his famous saying. That's right. And then Saturday, August the, the 6th. 6th. At 6 p.m. Todd White Todd's will be here. Be That's right. And uh, you'll not want to miss him as well. I'll tell you what, a life that has been changed. Radically changed. Radically by, changed. By the power of God. That's right. 1025 West Kenosha, right here in Broken Air. Come on and be with us. And uh, If you know, you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, we're going to be there August the 21st through the 23rd at Church Alive, Pastors Mike and Sherry Schaefer. You can then go we're going to fly on over to Arizona, that's to right. Chandler, and we'll be there the 24th through the 26th yes. at Faith Family Church with Pastors Andy and De Deborah White. Hey, you can go online, rhema.org, and get any of the get all the information right. times and everything anything we're doing but hey let me let me remind you that you can go on to rhema.org and you can download podcasts you can go yes. to archives and get all kinds of things you can read our word of faith magazine that's right uh just all kinds of stuff and hey let me remind you we're on roku too so if you you can subscribe to our channel that's and right. watch our sunday morning am services there are hey we, we have an app yeah, we have an app. Uh, Rama you, TV. You can go and get there. But uh, you can go online, and we stream every Sunday morning, every That's Sunday right. night, every Wednesday night. Oh, uh, just if you want to know anything about our ministry, go to Rama.org, and it is all there. Everything is there. But uh, let me thank you because of you being a Word Partner Club yes. with, with us. What's a Word Partner Club? Well, that's somebody that sends in an offering once a month, whatever you can send, and it helps us to keep bringing hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. How to Train the Human Spirit, a new product by Kenneth E. Hagan that teaches scriptural principles we can practice to train our human spirits. In the book, It's Your Move by Kenneth W. Hagan, learn how to move out of the arena of discouragement into the arena of blessings. Both the book and the CD can be yours for only $10 right now. To order, just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on to rhema.org anytime, day or night. Do it now. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.